I want you to think about the last decision you made, whatever it might be, whether to go to a restaurant, or to buy a car, or to go to a website, whatever that decision was. Now I want you to try to think of the thing that happened before that. What was the thing that made that made you get to that decision? Made you land on that decision? I can almost promise you that it was a piece of content. A video, a picture, a blog post, an article, a news article, an email, a text from somebody. Okay? The thing that led you to that decision was a single piece of content. And before that was another piece of content. And there were probably tens or twenties or hundreds of pieces of content that led you that, to that decision. Content is what makes the world go in today's day and age. It affects politics, it affects our decisions, it affects our purchases, and that is why content marketing is one of the most powerful types of marketing that a brand can use to influence growth. Today's video, we're gonna talk all about content marketing, why it's so important, what it is, some examples of how brands, both big and small, are using content to grow their business into millions and billions of dollars. So let's dive in. I'm John Timmerman, founder and CEO of Good Monster, an e-commerce marketing agency. And content marketing is one of my favorite things to talk about. It's one of my most favorite things to do. Uh, recently, myself and my team have really dove in to content marketing. Lots of videos, lots of blog posts, lots of uh, uh, podcasts, uh, and uh, many other types of content. So today's video is really something I'm passionate about. It's really something that I'm very biased about because number one, it's what I do for a living. But number two, it is something that I see changing the lives of entrepreneurs and executives and, and their businesses all across the world. And I am 100% confident that this is a topic that all of you should be paying attention to if your goal is to grow your business. There's a couple of reasons why. First reason is that, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, it is what influences consumers. So pictures and videos and, and, and copy uh, and, and designs, these are all things that we consume, whether consciously or subconsciously, to make our decisions. And the second reason is that advertising is becoming harder and harder to make work. Consumers are getting smarter. They're getting sort of put off by privacy and being attacked by, by ads everywhere they go. And so the trust in advertising is going down every single day. But that is being replaced by our need to consume content. So when I use the term content marketing, we're, I'm simply talking about creating content that helps move people, content marketing, right? And, you know, it's got lots of different names. Content marketing could be advertising. Social media could be, could be content marketing. But when we talk about content marketing, it's typically organic content that adds value to somebody's lives. It is not advertising, which is trying to push a message on somebody. Content marketing works in much more of a pull type format. So that's what we're talking about when, I, when we talk about content marketing. It's important to your business, as I mentioned, because it is your best opportunity to win an audience, right? You're not forcing them to do, do something like you are with advertising. You're encouraging them to enter your community because you're adding value, either information or education or entertainment, some sort of value to their lives, right? So that's why content marketing is so important. So the different types of content marketing, we have blog posts, as I mentioned, and articles. We have eBooks. We have videos that can go on a variety of different platforms. We have photos that can go on a variety of different platforms. Um, and we have uh, podcasts and we have music, which yes, is a type of content. In fact, we're seeing this grow uh, largely because of TikTok. So brands and people are coming out with their own songs as a form of content to entertain people and engage them to join their community. So how can you start to utilize these different types of content to grow your business? Now, I'm not saying anything that you probably don't know because you've been seeing your competitors and people in your industry and businesses in your industry create content probably for the existence of your business online. 
but it's often easier said than done to actually get started. So I'm going to address two people here. I'm going to address those of you out there that think I don't have to do content marketing because we've got our own system of sales uh, that is growing our business. Maybe you're in the B2B space. Um, but particularly for consumer businesses, even if you're relying on distributors and retail stores and outlets to sell your products, creating content will help sales across all channels. This is the case for B2B and this is the case for uh, D2C. So if you are just looking into content marketing, the two different buckets here are, I'm not sure if I need content marketing. The other bucket is, I'm not sure how to start content marketing. It's overwhelming. There's so many different places I could put content. There's so many different types of content that I can create. How do we manage this? How do we handle this? So I'm gonna address the first uh, bucket first. If you think you don't need content marketing, maybe you don't need it. But would you rather have a $10 million business or a $20 million business? Would you have, rather have a $500,000 business or a $1 million business? Now, I'm not guaranteeing that it will double your business, but the opportunities that content will bring you in your business are drastically higher than if you did no content. And it's, a, it's, it's simple logic. If you get your message out there more, you, have, you build awareness more, more a higher percentage uh, or a greater number of people will convert to customers because if you have a product and a service that people need, some of those people that are seeing your content will have a need to uh, engage with you and potentially buy your product or your service. So it's simple logic. If you get your message out there, more people will engage with your business. So maybe you don't need it, but you could definitely benefit from it. The second bucket is where do I start? And that's where I want to focus right now. Because whether you're just a person starting out, you're, you're, you're a solopreneur, you're just starting your new business, or you're a Fortune 500 company, here's how, content, here's how you can dive into content marketing. And specifically for Fortune 500 companies, content does not have to be polished in today's day and age. In fact, consumers prefer it. Look at the rise of TikTok and Snapchat, and before that, Vine, and before that, Musical.ly. These are user-generated content platforms. The content is filmed from our phones. It's rough. It's not edited. It's not highly produced. And that goes for big brands as well. Big brands still think, because their agencies still think, that we need to have a $500 or $1 million video produced and a $5 million TV campaign to really look like we are a professional top quality brand. But the respect that you're going to get with Generation Z and the generations to come in the near future are going to be content that makes them feel like they're part of your brand, that makes them feel like you're their friend or, or you're, you know, your brand is supporting their lives. And so creating TikTok videos from your phone as Budweiser is going to earn you more respect over time than spending you know, $10 million on a TV campaign. You've already done that for years and people already know you. So now trying to meet them where they are uh, is a, a much better strategy in today's digital age. So that being said, that means it's much easier to create content, video, written, audio, all of those different types of content are very easy to create. And here's the kicker, whether you're a small brand or a big brand, you can start out by creating easy content from your phone and measure what is accepted the most, what, what gets the most attention, what, uh, what is most popular, what's the, what's the best performing pieces of content, and then you can decide to invest more money into a larger campaign. I'll give you an example. A brand like Budweiser could create hundreds of TikToks and Snapchat videos using their uh, thousands of influencers or millions of customers and user-generated content. They could collect that in a variety of different ways and post that on TikTok and Snapchat and Twitter and all their other platforms. They could measure what gets the most engagement, what sparks the, mo the, the most positive reactions from their audience, and then they can take that concept and they can build that into a larger, more expensive campaign. Now, they'd have to be careful because the whole purpose of content marketing in, in today's day and age is to engage people. So they have to be careful not to turn it into an ad. It could 
people are smart and it could be viewed as a, a, a negative. Like now they're trying to sell me. It started out as cool, but now they're trying to sell me. This actually happened with uh, Bat Dad. I'm not sure if those of you out there uh, remember Bat Dad. Uh, it was a dad that dressed up as Batman and he did this dark voice and he would always he would always be facing the camera and his son was in the background doing crazy stuff and and he would be like reacting as Batman. It was hilarious. And he just started doing these videos. I think it was on Vine. I'm not sure, but I, I think it was on Vine. And it grew wildly popular. But then brands started to pay Bat Dad. Uh, and you can look it up. I can't remember the brands that actually uh, had him as a spokesperson. But he started to appear in commercials. And it diluted the allure of Bat Dad. Everyone related with Bat Dad. Bat Dad was just trying to entertain his son. And, and it was in their home. And it was a cell phone. But as soon as it became more more scripted and more produced, it now became an advertisement. It stopped being content marketing and started being an ad. Okay. So a little lesson in, in how not to really utilize your content marketing, or at least think before you create an ad out of uh, organic content. But anyways, I digress. Let's get back to content marketing and how you can start to do it. So videos are very easy to produce. You just use your phone. Uh, most phones have 4K or at least high quality video now. And so creating a video surrounding the topics of your industry it doesn't have to be the specific thing that you sell because that could be an ad. Instead, talk about the things that your audience cares about. If you're selling makeup, then talk about skincare, talk about um, going out to dinner, talking, talk about, you know, getting ready for work, talk about outfits that that you know can help you feel more powerful. Talk about things that your audience cares about and you can organically work in uh, beauty tips and makeup tips and things that have to do a little bit more with your product, okay? That's the key because if you just talk about your product over and over and over again, whether it's on video or whether it's one of the other types of content, it could be viewed as an ad and that sort of turns off the effect of content marketing. So you could film with your phone uh, audio. Also, you could use voice memos on your phone. You could uh, very easily have a podcast set up like this with a mic and a, a system like GarageBand on uh, on your Mac, and you can launch your podcast through a variety of different apps. Anchor is one of them that we use. Anchor.fm, I believe it's called. We upload our audio to F to, to Anchor, and then Anchor puts it on all the different uh, podcasting platforms like uh, Apple Podcasts and uh, Google Play and um, Spotify and Stitcher and all the other ones. Okay. Very easy to do. So now you have podcasts, you have videos, written content, even easier. It's free to start a blog. You could start, uh, on a lot of different, you could download WordPress, um, uh, WordPress site for free. There's a lot of different blogging platforms that you can use to just start writing. And today you don't even need a specific blogging platform. If you don't, really want one. You can start on LinkedIn. LinkedIn allows you to create a newsletter, which could be a long form blog, and you can launch them as often as you want. I have a newsletter on LinkedIn. It's basically the same exact posts that I'm putting on my website, but I'm putting them on LinkedIn as well for the people that don't know about my website, but they do follow me on LinkedIn. So written content, super easy. And I'm going to give you all a little secret tip out there too. If you are not a good writer, because I have plenty of executives and uh, marketing leaders at uh, brands that say, I'm not a good writer. You know, we need to go hire a copywriter. That's fine if you can afford to hire a copywriter. But if you are not a great writer, but you want to put, create your own content, use a program called jasper.ai. Uh, we use it internally here. I use it to write a lot of my blog posts. And what it does is it uses artificial intelligence to help you write your blog posts. So Normally, what I would do to write a blog post is I would start with a headline. What's the title? What's the hook? And then I would try to write the first paragraph. And then I would write an outline. And then underneath each of those outline items, I'd have to go and myself or my team would have to research to try to bring in statistics or resources as a proof of what I'm talking about. Uh, and then I would have to go research the things that I maybe I don't know 100% of the topic that I want to write about. So I want to go do some quick research to make sure I'm presenting the correct information. Well, Jasper does a lot of that work for me. So now what I do is I will write about a particular topic. I'll write a little intro uh, or an overview of the topic. 
And then I will use Jasper's tools to help recommend a title, to help recommend an outline, and to start generating paragraphs, actually writing the paragraphs for me by pulling and sourcing information from around the internet. And then I will use their program to check the grammar through Grammarly, and I will use their program to make sure that there's no copyright issues or um, uh, you know, I'm not taking anybody else's content, right? So this can help you write if you're not a good writer. So keep that tip in mind, jasper.ai, it's a great tool. So another way to create content very easily, design content specifically, is a program, an app called Canva. Canva has been around for over a decade and they have an app and it will, they allow you to design any sort of infographics or eBooks or quote cards or graphics that you want to um, using stock images or your own images and their font, uh, color grading tools and, and things like that. So that covers most of the type of content that you'd wanna create. And it's easier than ever because you could do it all from your phone. So that's where you can start if you have no budget. And if you do start to have a budget, you can hire people to create just a little bit higher quality content and to measure that content and to grow and to scale uh, with your brand. As you earn more revenue, you can invest in more content, which will then earn you more revenue, which then you can invest in more content. It's a viciously awesome cycle. So that's how content marketing can be started from really nothing with almost no budget. So anybody can do that. You can launch a Shopify store if you've got a great product and you can invest in content marketing to grow that brand. Where does all this content go? It can go in a variety of different places. Social media is one of them, and there's many different platforms. Okay, so social media can be a distribution channel for your videos, your pictures, your graphics, your written content, and your podcasts and your audio. Another place is your blog. So a blog can be a distribution channel for videos. You can embed your podcasts. You can write your blog posts. You can embed your designs, and you can... Um, have downloadable ebooks and infographics. Another place is email. Email, you can embed your videos, your graphics, you can write out long form or short form content, you can embed your podcasts, you can put all of your content into email. So, social media, your blog, and email are th three channels that you own to a certain extent. You know, yes, you rent the space from social media, but you know, you own your own social media channel as long as that social media platform doesn't go under or something like that. So those are the places that you can distribute your content. Now, I want to get into some examples because if you're still here, you're still watching me, you're interested. You're, you understand that content marketing can quite literally double your business if you do it right and you do it consistently. Triple your business, quadruple. I don't know what it will do as a multiple, but I can guarantee you if you stay consistent and you have a valuable message and you have a valuable product, it will grow your business. But let's get into some examples of brands or people, personal brands, that have started with content marketing and transitioned that into an actual, real, very successful business. The first one I want to talk about is somebody that many of you know, and that's Gary Vaynerchuk. So Gary Vaynerchuk started out in the wine business. He, he helped to run his father's single wine store in New Jersey. He uh, started a wine show called Line, Wine Library TV in 2006, launched it on YouTube, and he leveraged that video show, that show, that daily show, he did five days a week, he leveraged that into a personal brand as this weird wine guy. And then what he did is he leveraged that authenticity and that authority that he earned via creating content on video to helping to grow, uh, to launch and grow uh, winelibrary.com, which was an e-commerce version of the wine store. They went from $3 million as a physical store to $60 million as an e-commerce store, mainly because of the content Gary was putting out. So he did that for one business, content marketing leveraged to grow a uh, an e-commerce brand, very successful. After that, he got out of the wine business, out of his father's wine business and moved into the advertising world. And he started to talk about uh, uh, advertising and marketing and growing businesses. And particularly, he started to do this on Twitter. And he grew his brand on Twitter to a following of over a million people. 
he leveraged that content, tweets that he was putting out and the videos that he was putting out, now talking a little bit more about business and marketing, leveraged that into getting his first community management client. Community management is basically um, managing the online community. So if a brand like Budweiser or Pepsi, you know, it's got lots of people talking about them on a variety of different social media platforms. They need somebody to manage that, to respond to comments, to address customer service requests, and to generally entertain and make people laugh. That's where VaynerMedia, which was Gary's uh, agency that, they, that he launched, that's where they started. So they got their first client. He kept putting out content on Twitter. He started to put out content on Facebook, kept putting out videos on YouTube, and then kept growing with all the other platforms that came out and launched. And as he continued to put out content, he continued to grow his agency to the point now where in 2022, they just got ranked as, um, I think it's Ad Age, Ad Age's top five agencies of the year. Uh, or number five agency of the year, ad agency of the year. And they're very recognizable as one of the best agencies to manage uh, a brand's guerrilla content on platforms like TikTok, all the way up to producing high quality Super Bowl commercials and managing the media. So he leveraged his content into growing one of the most successful ad agencies in the country. Gary used video content to start as a nobody a wine guy out of New Jersey, all the way into one of the most recognizable social media uh, influencers and personalities on the planet and one of the most successful ad agencies in the country. Another example I'd like to use is TED, TED Talks, TEDx, TED Conference. You've all seen the videos. Um, I think as of 2012, November of 2012 uh, or something like that, uh, they had already had over a billion views of TED Talks. And today, They've got 3,500 free videos on their website. TED Talks started back in 2006 using free videos to build their brand. They started putting out videos curated by their event, TED Conferences. It was an annual event once a year. They started taking the videos from that and putting them online. And then they started to expand into more TED Talks, and they started to expand into more videos online. They put the videos out for free as free content, which built the brand of TED and engaged people to want to attend the conferences. And as they expanded the conferences across the country, across the world, um, more people wanted to attend the local conferences, more people wanted to attend the national conferences, and more people wanted to attend anything and consume anything related to TED. Because TED, not to be confused with a person, TED, uh, the event, TED uh, curated some of the best, most knowledgeable, skilled people in the industry. People like Elon Musk um, have, have, and Simon Sinek have done TED Talks and leveraged their knowledge and their you know, desire to talk about what they love and talk about what they know about and turning that into their own content. So they didn't even create their own content, really. They took other people. They said, hey, we'll give you a platform. That person did a TED Talk. Ted filmed it, put it out for free, and they used that to grow their brand. So that's an amazing, that's an amazing example of uh, use of curated content that you're already making, you're already you know, sort of engaging in, and just putting it online and letting the rest, the, the, the rest of the chips fall where they may. And in the last example I want to use of somebody growing their brand and leveraging that into a much larger business is Neil Patel. Neil Patel is similar to Gary Vaynerchuk, but Neil started blogging about SEO and digital marketing and content marketing 20 years ago. Started a blog, neilpatel.com. Uh, I think he started another blog called Quick Sprout. Um, and he started several software businesses related to digital marketing. Kiss Metrics was one. It's a data and analytics platform. Um, Hello Bar is another one that was a, uh, I think still is, a bar that would would appear at the top of a WordPress site or a website that is like a call to action. So if you wanted somebody to click to get a coupon or click to subscribe to an email list or something like that, the Hello Bar was a little plugin you could install to do that. So he launched these businesses on the back of his content. 
And if you Google anything related to online marketing or digital marketing or content marketing, chances are Neil's blog posts show up first in Google because he's an expert at SEO. So over the course of 20 years, he created thousands of blog posts and now creates thousands of blog posts and videos and has a podcast all to all free to engage people and earn trust who then look for what Neil is doing because they want to engage with whatever he's doing. That's how content marketing works. It earns trust and it attracts people to you. Well, Neil in 2017 launched NP Digital, an agency specializing in SEO and digital marketing. And as soon as he did that, started to experience rapid growth because of the 20 years of content and brand building that he had done. So from 2017, just five short years ago, not even, probably four and a half, four or five, four, four to five years ago, he grew NP Digital to uh, a, somewhere around $70 million, a projected $70 million in revenue and over 100 employees. And uh, they were ranked the number one search and performance agency for Media Post uh, in just a short period of time. Uh, in conjunction, Good Monster, my agency has been around for 10 years. I had no brand to start. And it's been much more difficult for me and our agency to grow. And we're nowhere near $70 million right now because we didn't have a brand. I didn't have a brand. Good Monster didn't have a brand. And so we had to prove ourselves every step of the way. Neil Patel spent 20 years growing his brand and his knowledge and proof that he knows what he's doing so that when he launched the agency, he instantaneously had trust and the set, the sell to a brand was easy, right? That is another example of how content has led to a much easier launch and growth of a business. So Gary Vaynerchuk, TED Talks, and Neil Patel, good examples of how you can start from nothing, create content, and leverage that into, uh, into a business. And there are thousands, if not millions, hundreds of thousands of other examples of influencers who had a viral TikTok video that they leveraged into being paid as a brand ambassador and they leveraged into starting their own clothing company or their own uh, uh, consulting company uh, or their own fitness company. H hundreds of thousands of examples now that we are really in the social media age. Uh, so I want to talk about some bigger brands because those are how, how people started from nothing and launched businesses based on content marketing. But how are bigger brands using content marketing to further grow their business. Well, one business, one big brand uh, that is leveraging content marketing in a very, very innovative and creative way is Glossier. Uh, I think it's how you pronounce it, Glossier. They're a beauty brand and they started with a blog, Into the Gloss, and they built up millions, uh, tens of millions of followers and fans of that blog talking about everything from skincare routines to hair care and everything in between, right? They've built their brand to now being an e-commerce brand selling products and, and still creating content through their website. And what they do now is they use their blog as a place to share stories about their customers. So instead of what most other brands do, which is they write, you know, top five ways to maintain your skincare routine or top 21 products to, uh, to put on your skin in the sun, something like that, right? Instead of doing that, what they do is they tell customer stories on their blog. So the blog posts are more like meet the high-powered executive that finds, uh, finds five minutes per day to maintain smooth skin, something like that. So they use their blog to tell stories about average people, normal people, which is super relatable for their potential customers because they're learning what other people are doing that are just like them instead of only seeing high-end, big, successful, multi-million dollar influencers presenting their products. It's much more relatable, super innovative, and works because they still have millions, uh, tens of millions of readers of that blog, and that's in addition to all of their followers and people engaging over on their social media. So Glossier is still using content marketing in a very efficient, effective way to maintain and continuously grow their business. Another big brand that uh, I'm going to actually say this, this is two brands in one, two totally separate brands, but they're, they're using a similar type of content marketing. One brand is GoPro. 
And the reason I'm using two brands is because GoPro has an unfair advantage. They literally make a camera. And so creating video content becomes very naturally to them. And most other companies, your company probably does not produce a camera. But GoPro utilizes their professional athletes that they work with and everyday people who are using GoPros to film their snowboarding sessions or skydiving sessions or, uh, you know, uh, motocross, any sort of extreme sport, but also many other things like bird watching or hunting or things like that. They're utilizing all that video to, to, to reshare on their own social media platform and put on their website and everywhere else. So that content is continuously being put out, continuously sells the product and engages people in the thing that's being filmed all at the same time. But the second brand I want to mention that's doing something very different and has for probably 20 years now is Red Bull. And Red Bull also uses video of crazy motocross backflip stunts and skydiving and hang gliding and mountain climbing and all these things, uses that content to build a brand around what Red Bull stands for. Energy, you know, uh, extreme uh, athletics, uh, you know, progression, uh, those, those types of things. They use that video on social media. They use it. Uh, even in their own show, I think they have their own TV channel or streaming channel, Red Bull TV. They use this content to engage the audience, not around their product. They don't have people like saying, oh my gosh, I love the taste of Red Bull in any of those pieces of content. The content is all about the lifestyle. But because Red Bull's logo is everywhere, and sure, there's some product placement in there. And uh, at the end of a NASCAR race, whoever's sponsored by Red Bull drinks water most likely out of their Red Bull water bottle. Sure, there's product placement, but the content that they're putting out gets people excited and motivated because fans of snowboarding will watch the Red Bull snowboarding videos. Fans of motocross will watch Red Bull's motocross videos. And by seeing Red Bull over and 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 over again, um, it just becomes ingrained in our brains that I should go get a Red Bull if I want to get energy and if I want to live this sort of extreme lifestyle. So Go, GoPro and Red Bull are both really good examples of video content, big brands using video content to further grow their business. And the last example I want to use is a really interesting one. So HubSpot. HubSpot is actually a content marketing software platform. It helps companies manage their con content and automate their marketing and then uh, manage their leads using a CRM system. So you might think, well, duh, they're doing content marketing because they are a content marketing platform. But that's not the example that I want to use. Um, I want to tell you a story. About two years ago, I started reading this newsletter called The Hustle. Awesome newsletter about business and tech and emerging tech and things that I care about in the business world. Uh, right now, they're covering, um, at the time I'm filming this video, Elon Musk put in a bid to buy Twitter for like $48 billion. Could be a media stunt, who knows, but... The hustle does snippets like that. You know, Jeff Bezos stepping down from CEO of Amazon last year. They do little daily uh, snippets of information that are very valuable as far as uh, education and inf information, but they do it in a funny, witty way. Their copywriting is great. They put memes and GIFs in there that are really funny. So it's a great newsletter. And I started reading it. I started forwarding it to everybody on my team and my friends that were also in business that I thought would, would find it valuable. Well, about a year ago, uh, it was announced that HubSpot purchased The Hustle for $25 million, a daily newsletter. That's really all they had. They just launched a daily newsletter, uh, and they would get sponsorships supported, supporting the emails and things like that. HubSpot found so much value in the content that they could not replicate because if they did something like that, even if it was as good as the hustle, it would still be viewed as advertising. It would, because people are smart, especially people that might pay attention to HubSpot, who are generally marketers or executives or founders or business owners, something like that. They would say, oh, the HubSpot's putting this content out, but I'm not going to trust it quite as much because it's HubSpot, which means I know that they want me to buy something. So instead, what HubSpot did is they went out and found a concurrent community of people a very authentic, trusting community of people. And they looked at the business that those people were fans of. They purchased the business and they didn't blur the lines. 
It didn't become The Hustle by HubSpot, or it didn't become HubSpot Presents The Hustle. They maintain the hustle separately, and now what HubSpot does is they very secretly weave in free guides and uh, downloadable templates, and they put links in sometimes to their conference, Inbound 2022, very organically in the newsletter so that it appears uh, very aligned and very streamlined with the content that's already going out there. It doesn't seem like advertisements. So my guess is HubSpot's going to make back their $25 million in new customers purely by uh, organically weaving in their free guides. Because as I'm reading The Hustle and I read Elon Musk tries to buy Twitter for $48 million and uh, Jeff Bezos steps down as C Amazon CEO and then the next one down is marketing company comes out with free guide for uh, you know growing your e-commerce brand. Some people are going to click on that. They're going to be like, what? Who is this market? They're going to click on it. It's going to lead to HubSpot.com slash free guide. And then once they get there, they're going to be like, oh, HubSpot putting, is putting out this free guide. I want to download it and share it with my team. They do that, and then HubSpot now has a lead for a new customer. If they do that every single day, the hustle comes out with a newsletter every single day, seven days a week, um, I think. Maybe not on Sundays, but um, they come out with a, a, a newsletter almost every single day. And HubSpot probably has nine times out of 10, they have some sort of piece of content or link or free guide or something in that email. Multiply that over several years and the inbound funnel to HubSpot is probably going to be really great. And the converting those leads, which HubSpot already knows how to do, is probably going to be really great. So they're going to earn back their $25 million. This is an amazing display of content marketing because HubSpot could have started that from scratch, but instead they went and bought the business integrated it with their current content marketing system, and it just adds value. I love it. I love the hustle. I love the strategy. It's great. So there you have it, content marketing. Content is king. You've heard it. And it isn't going to go anywhere. In fact, I believe it will only become more important for brands or people uh, to create content because as advertising, people become more skeptical, skeptical of advertising and privacy issues it's going to make content marketing more important for businesses to drive fans and sales uh, and earn trust from people. So take my advice. If you don't have the resources right now, use your phone to start filming videos, use LinkedIn to start writing long form articles and use voice memos to start recording a podcast. It's easy. You just build it into your schedule and start putting out content and then look at what does the best, what performs the best and go, deeper into that. If you're a larger brand, you have the resources, you have the budget to hire an agency or to hire an internal team to start creating thousands of pieces of content that will help to lift your brand up in addition to all the advertising that you're probably doing. But regardless of who you are or where you're starting from, content marketing is the future. Content marketing will help you avoid advertising costs or changes in ad policies, and it will help you win over long term customers, increase your lifetime value, and decrease your cost to acquire a customer. So if you're geeking out on advertising numbers uh, and advertising acronyms like LTV and CAC, content marketing is the way to improve all of your numbers. It really is. I hope you found this video entertaining and informational. If you did, share it with your team, share it with your colleagues, whoever you think might find value from this. Subscribe to the channel if you like learning about business and specifically e-commerce because that's all I talk about. And we'll see you in the next video.